Are you curious about why Microsoft acquired GitHub? And do you know that combining GitHub with Azure DevOps, you can have a very efficient, secure, and powerful DevOps workflow? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coded Dave. Today, I have a special video for you because, in fact, recently I've spoken to an event in which I presented an end-to-end -end DevOps workflow using the integration between Azure DevOps and GitHub. This video is an extract of that talk, and you will see how the two tools work seamlessly together to achieve a better DevOps experience. And also, you will see some best practices applied to DevOps and DevSecOps in real scenarios. I will cover work management and work planning in GitHub Action, code management and security management in GitHub, and then build NCI in GitHub Actions to finish with release and CD in Azure Pipelines. But let's dive into it. Let's start this. Just a quick word about myself. My name is Davide. I'm a DevOps architect and I work with our biggest and most important clients to help them in their DevOps transformation. And today I will walk you through an end-to-end -end scenario that spans across again Azure DevOps and GitHub. And before I want to spend 10 minutes talking to you through some of the rationals why you know Microsoft acquired GitHub, what is the value of using GitHub today? And then we will go into the demo seeing, as I said before, an end-to-end workflow of how things work when you integrate Azure DevOps and GitHub. All right, so let's start with this. Why did Microsoft decide to acquire GitHub? Well, we need to, we need to see all the changes and basically the state of, of the market in general uh, for the software development. There's a huge part that open source plays even in the enterprise applications. From the uh, Synopsys report in 2019, they found out that about 99%, so basically the total landscape of large enterprise applications have some open source component in them. And new code bases, new application being developed, there's up to 90% of open source code. So when you look at this scenario and when you see what is or who is the main player in the open source community, uh, well, of course, that, that is GitHub. So, so it seemed like a, a natural progression from a, from a company that you know, used open source, believes in open source, and actually wants to bring open source into, into the enterprise uh, world. Microsoft, of course, had already Azure DevOps and still has Azure DevOps. And let me say that Azure DevOps is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's, it's a trusted and reliable platform. But now we also have GitHub, which has like more than 56 million users. And we are trying to bring all the learnings and all the advantages that we may have in GitHub into Azure DevOps and all the learning in the enterprise space that we have with Azure DevOps into GitHub to make it not only the best platform for open source development, but also for enterprise development as well. If you think about Microsoft mission to empower every person and every organization in the world to achieve more. And you put it together with the GitHub vision, which is to be the home for all developers. You can see that is to be able to enable all these 56 million and all the users to come to basically achieve more for their projects, but also for their organizations by making GitHub not only the home for all developers, but the home for DevOps and DevOps tooling. Now the Azure DevOps and the GitHub engineering not only share the same leadership, but the engineering team, we can say it's basically the same engineering team. And as I said before, this allows us to bring the requirements and the learning in the enterprise space that we gained with Azure DevOps to GitHub to make it better for basically everyone. What are the value? Why should we use GitHub or why enterprise clients use GitHub today? One of the main benefits from GitHub is the adoption or the, the enabling for inner source. Inner source basically means that you can work on your enterprise projects like they were open source project. And that allows different teams to, to share code, to share knowledge, to break the silos across different teams and to have a much broader collaboration across teams, to have less duplication of code 
secure workflow and you know many many other benefits github has been built from ground up with this in mind with open source and inner source it's the easiest and probably most powerful platform for inner source another huge benefit that you have is what we call a GitHub Advanced Security. And GitHub Advanced Security, with the tools that I will mention briefly in a second, keep your code base under control for security and for vulnerabilities and so on and so forth. A lot of people think that security is only something for you know security researcher, but you can leverage, you can make security and you should make security part of the day-to-day -day work. And so you can leverage the massive pool of developers that is way bigger when compared with security specialists. Um, some of the tools I was talking about are like code scanning that allows you to automatically scan your code to check for vulnerabilities and it's completely integrated and completely automated or can be something like secret scanning that integrate with most of the service providers like cloud providers or other kind of service providers to have patterns and recognitions of for example configuration keys uh, api keys and you know all the secrets you can think of and is able to identify those secrets, alert you that you have some secret in your code or wherever you have it, uh, is also able to make that secret or that key not valid anymore. So if someone got that secret, will not be able to, to make you any harm because that secret will not work anymore. Last but not least, insights, and this is also pretty important for enterprise companies, which allow you to have a bird's eye view on all the metrics related to your processes. Based on that, you can develop KPIs. You can, if you use OKRs, you can track your OKRs as well. So there's a lot of features there already, but more and more features will be added over time. All right, I start from Azure boards. So of course you can use the GitHub project boards to keep track of your issues and your work items and everything. But at the, for the time being, at least Azure boards is still more enterprise ready. If you look at the first part over here, you see that I have something called technical debt and security work. And this brings up my, my first best practice. The security work should be always treated as normal work. Don't leave security changes or security assessment after the development, but make it part of the development process. So in this case, we have these two work items and I want to work on this 467. Apparently there are some hard-coded credentials in my code base. So I will assign this to myself and I'll move it to in progress. My code is not in Azure DevOps. My code is in GitHub. And you may ask, how did you know that uh, you have these arcoded credentials? Uh, the person that op opened that work item, how did you know? Well, if we look at this one on GitHub, we have this security tab over here. And you can see that I have five security notifications, if you will. If I go into, into this, I can see that I have these code scanning alerts where my five notifications are. And if I go inside in the code QL part, I have the hard code credentials and the XML injection vulnerabilities that are actually the items we've seen on Azure boards. If I open one, the hard coded credentials that I'm going to work on, I can see a bunch of things. I can see exactly where this happens in the file and even in the line where the problem is. Of course, this is a, is a very simple problem to spot, but it's good for the demo. I have an explanation that why this is a problem and how it's being detected. And again, a way broader and more comprehensive explanation on what the problem is, what are the recommendations and possibly how to fix it. If you see here, for example, this is my scenario that the code I have, and this would be one possible solution for solving this problem. And all of this is completely automated thanks to CodeQL. Let's go to the file and let's fix the problem first. And let me edit this. Of course, in a real scenario, you probably will not do this on the GitHub interface directly. You will probably do it in a IDE or something like that. And also the, the fix I'm going to implement is obviously not, not an acceptable fix, but for the demo sake, I think it's okay. Fixed 
vulnerability fixes AB ash 467. If I use this notation over here, it's just telling to GitHub that this commit will fix something that is on Azure board AB and with the ID 467. When I do so and I commit on a new branch, automatically GitHub will be able to link that to my work item. And in fact, if I go back here to Azure DevOps and I open this, I can see in the development that this particular work item has been associated with this commit in GitHub. If we go back here, you see that GitHub is already asking me if I want to open a pull request and I should probably have some reviewers. In this case, I'm, I'm not gonna add some reviewers, but it's fairly important to have one. And I'm going to create the pull request. Once again, since I have these in the title, I can see that now not only the commit has been associated with my work item, but also the PR is there that I just created. And it's, I can also see that it's still in an open state. And at any point in time, I can just click on any of this link and be brought directly to the pull request experience page. As I was saying before, there are a number of things, but the most important part is this one. So I'm having this CI and checks, etc., running for my pull request. This will take a while. And in this, in this case, I also had Sonar Cloud analysis here. I, I use this for a very simple reason. So if you've seen before in the security, we actually had two vulnerabilities, the XML injection, and we had this hard-coded credential vulnerability that I just fixed. But if you see here, the Sonar Cloud, it says that there is no vulnerabilities. And this is not really true because again, we still have the XML injection vulnerability presence inside the code base. Now, I'm not saying that Sonar Cloud is not a good tool, but not all the tools are able to do what code scanning is able to do. Because code scanning, it's basically based not only on you know, common patterns and, and anything like that, but it's based more on real code patterns and real code vulnerabilities that come from the, you know, the whole community on GitHub and from the CodeQL experience that we matured in the years. All the checks are almost done. There's only one left. Not sure why this is taking this long. All right, so let me, this is something that you should not do, uh, but if you see, this is not required because I didn't mark it as required. So I can go uh, uh, ahead and merge it. In a real scenario, you would probably have that as blocking because you want to make sure there's no security vulnerabilities, right? Now I, I merged my pull request and first thing I can go here and I can see that I still had, okay, my previous commit. I have still my PR, but now my PR is marked as closed. And now I also have, of course, my commit to the main branch. And if you see over here, this work item is already been marked as done. And it's even clearer here. You can see that now I have it under the done column here. And the reason for this is again, that I had, if I go back to, to my PR, I had this fixes and the reference to that work item. The integration makes sure that the work items, when I use some, some words like fixes or closes or solve, uh, will be automatically closed whenever a PR is merged. If now we go back to our actions, we will see that uh, the CI is in progress. We again have the code QL running. We have the security for open source. And we now also have this CI. One different things that I want to do when I do CI rather than pull request is having my code deployed, right? For doing so, I have this Docker CI workflow that builds a Docker image and pushes the image to the GitHub container registry. GitHub is now its own container registry. And then it exports that image and create a release in GitHub. And after doing so, since I want to deploy with Azure Pipelines, I can trigger a release in Azure Pipeline. While this is running, let me show you one more thing that I think it's important. For the CodeQL analysis and the OSSR analysis, my actions is triggered in three different ways. We've seen the pull request trigger. So that means that every time I have a pull request, this code QL analysis will start and check that the code in my pull request is safe and sound. 
Of course, as we see now, I have it on push. So every, every time I commit my code into my main branch or in my master branch in this case, this will start and check my code. But also, and probably even more importantly, I can schedule and I should schedule this at a given interval. And the reason why this is important is that sometimes you don't make changes to that specific code for, for a while, right? So you may not want to rely just on commits like you would do in here and in here. And of course, if you don't change the code, you will not introduce vulnerabilities. But what can happen is that there may be you know, new rules or new issues that have been detected in some components rather than in some development pattern that you may want to consider and you may want to solve. Having this running in a scheduled way will allow you to do so because this runs and you will be notified straight away. Let's see if this is passed. This is still running, but the CI is completed. So if I go back to my uh, Azure DevOps, I can go to the release pipelines. And as you can see, I have this release pipeline over here that is just being created and it's actually deploying to test. If I take a look at this, it's very simple. It's just getting the release I've created in GitHub and then it's just taking that image, rehydrate it. And now in this case, I, I commented it out because I'm not going to do a real deployment, but it pushes that image to my container registry. And from there, I will be able to you know, deploy it to whatever environment, it can be Kubernetes, can be app service, can be any host for your container. Let me show you briefly the uh, release. If you see over here, my CI, as I said before, create a release. And this is the one I just created three minutes ago, which contains the source code that generated that specific release. And I also have this tar file that I created as part of my CI process, which basically is the Docker image that I'm going to, to deploy and that the release pipeline is taking in the trigger stage and deploying to my test environment in this moment. As you can see, the deployment is t in test is succeeded. I have an approval required, so I can go ahead, approve this. I can have a comment like looks good to me. I can defer the deployment if I don't want to deploy in this moment, approve, and the deployment will start at whatever time we set. This was basically the end-to-end the -end scenario from the work item all the way to changing the code, do a pull request, do a code review, wait for all the checks and verifications and analysis to be completed before merging the PR, merging the pull request, having the CI creating a release into GitHub with the artifacts we need for deploying, and then getting those artifacts from Azure DevOps and deploy them. I could have deployed that in GitHub Actions as well, uh, now GitHub Actions supports environments as well, so that could be done, uh, no problem. But I wanted to show you more uh, an integration story. And once again, the integration between the tools is, is really easy to set up. You can enable the Azure DevOps extension in GitHub or the GitHub extension in Azure DevOps just to make the two tools communicate. Now, if I go back to the security tab, since the code QL scanning has run, you can see here that I, I have the XML injection, but I don't have any more the hard-coded credential vulnerability because we just solved it. Are you curious about why Microsoft acquired DevOps? Sure. Do they? Do they? I recently spoken on an event, on an event, code management and security in Got Good. And that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.